So I'm going to put the steering damper assembly back together. And this rod has to go in. And so you see it has a flat on there. Which, and there's also a flat inside, which is facing the two. So you can kind of get an idea where the orientation is so that you're not fumbling around too much. And I'm going to stick that up inside there. Goes all the way in like that. And then there's a little rubber or a little plastic bushing that goes in under center of it and a spring. And then we can find it where that two is right there. It should go right about on like so. There it is. I've got the steering damper set in the middle position and so I'm going to set the knob in such a way that the number one is facing forward and then when I put this part on everything should be indexed properly. There we go. Okay. Right on. Okay, when we were taking the bike apart, we just sort of left the damper um, hanging here. But now I'm going to take it off, actually, at this point, and just clean it and grease it up a bit. Just a little clip here. You need to pull out. You just wedge something behind it and pull on it. It comes off real easy like that. It's all rusty. Needs a little bit of cleaning. Just kind of gonna clean out the socket ends here a bit. Get the old grease out, what little is left, if any. There we go. And it's leaked a bit, but still damping a little bit. It should be fine. Just pump it up. Kind of works. If the steering and bearings are adjusted right, then this is a lot less of an issue anyway. So now I'm going to just put a little bit of grease inside here, both ends, and snap it back in place. Now the little clip, you gotta find the little hole. There we go, sorted. All right, before putting the front wheel on, I'm gonna put the fender on first. First, I'm just gonna get the fasteners all started. And up on top, on these carriage bolts, I'm going to replace the rubber washers. This is another cool thing that we do carry. Let's go right on there. All right, now we're ready for that wheel. So the, you'll note that the, the holes are slotted on the bracket. So I left those loose before because you, could, you can actually make a little adjustment to the positioning of the fender in, the, in this case. I'm just going to loosen these up a bit too. So now we've got the wheels in place and we need to have a way to slow down. So let's get onto the brakes next. At some point in time, the master cylinder leaked brake fluid and ate up all the paint here. So just can't really bring myself to putting it back together like this way. It won't be perfect, but I'm gonna try to clean up that rust at least a little bit. I'm 
pretty much ate this thing up too. So the day will come when we're gonna restore this bike and make it real pretty, but in the meantime, at least I wanna slow down this corrosion that's going on. Definitely not, not perfect, but it's gonna be a little bit better than it was. So, this is some pretty cool paint from Worth that we'll use on a lot of stuff. It's got a really nice finish, and it lays down really nice. And in a situation like this, where we don't wanna get paint everywhere, something like this, a piece of cardboard with a hole in it, and it limits where the paint goes. So you're not getting a lot of overspray. Works well. Cool. Big improvement. The other cool thing about that paint is it dries pretty fast so I can already get this thing going back on here. In the meantime, I've got the proper hose clamp, which is cool. So first I'm gonna do thing I'm gonna do here is, oh man, these connectors. So I wanna <laughs> put this on, but now I see the corrosion's gone even farther. These connections, there's, there's a lot of corrosion on there. And this is the brake light switch connection. Brake lights, pretty important thing. So I'm gonna put new connectors on, come back to this in a minute like to keep things as close to original as possible. And so if you've been looking at your bike in any detail, you know about these connectors here. And commonly, what you know, you see if you go to the hardware store, or something is one of those, those crimped connectors with like the blue plastic around there, you know, it looks, looks terrible. We can make it just like that. If you have the right tools and they don't have to be an ex big expense either. So check this out. We're going to just snip the old connector off. And strip away just about four or five millimeters of insulation. It's a real simple tool. Works great for trimming off the insulation. There we go. This tool here does a really nice job of, of rolling the connector, crimping it just like factory. So you have to put the tool into the proper slot, first of all. And it's only, there's only one, one right way that it goes in. You can actually see it's pre-shaped to, to initiate that roll. Put that in there like that. Get that in like so, and then just crimp that down. It's like a pretty much just as good as the one I cut, cut off of there. And then taking a slightly larger size, go to this one. You can see how it rolls that around. Boom. And that's a pretty nice repair. Quick and easy. All right, on the other one, we'll do, we're gonna also replace this other corroded connector here. And then we can use this tool here to remove the insulation. And then here's another version crimper if you want something super cool. This does both crimps at once, the insulator crimp and the wire connector crimp. It has these preformed 
channels in here. You simply select the, the most suitable one, put the connector in. Let's see. Like that. This is a good one. And if you can see, it's actually wide enough to, to um, make contact with both parts of the connector. So now all I have to do is insert the wire into the connector, like that. Give it one squeeze, and done. One, one go. If you need to, you can go over it again just to kind of get the, the you can kind of make it, make it a little, a little prettier. If you, but it's already, I would say, a great connection. There we go. All right. So I feel a whole lot better about that. So now we can proceed with the master cylinder installation. And that's going to sit about there. The clamp goes right through these two welds there in that, in that spot. Put the clamp right through this spot here. Now we're going to put the caliper on, but before we do, I want to clean the brake disc, just in case I got any fingerprints on there or any, any oil at all. So before we do that, take some brake parts cleaner and thoroughly clean the brake disc. Just because a part is new, you can't assume it's clean as well. There's sometimes a little bit of oil on there from uh, just from the manufacturer so that like corrosion inhibitors. So make sure that thing's real clean. Now this is the pin that holds the brake caliper in place and it has some eccentrics on there. The adjustment's made by turning the pin using a screwdriver. For installation and removal, it's threaded internally M8, so you can just put any bolt in there. It makes it a lot easier to handle the, the pin. And before I insert that, I'm just going to put a light smear of grease on there. Not, doesn't take much, just, just so that it spins nicely and doesn't get, ever get seized in there at all. Just a little bit. And now we can put this caliper in place. There's a cap that goes in here with a spring. We'll put that in later. We're going to have to go in and adjust. So next thing we'll do is put the hydraulic lines in. In the interest of making the brakes work as well as they can, um, I'm going to change the hydraulic line. This thing's old and should be replaced. We have these really cool uh, replicas. They're DOT approved and uh, real nice. So I'm going to install one of these. Start by putting it into the master cylinder. And then through this grommet. This is a little bit trash, but it'll work. Next, the, this line here. Might need to adjust the position of this bracket to get that centered in there. And then we can connect these two lines together and insert this grommet. So I'll put pushing the grommet onto the fitting here. So the trick with this grommet actually is to just set it right over the edge of the fitting like that so that it's on there it makes it a little bit easier to get the grommet into this bracket. It needs a, need just a little help with a screwdriver to get that lip inside. Once that lip's inserted into the bracket, then you can push the fitting through the grommet and it snaps into place. And now we'll connect these lines together.
And once you've got that all in place, get everything lined up real nice, and then don't forget to retighten this bolt here. All right, hydraulic lines installed. Now back to the master cylinder. So you don't always have to change out every part. If something looks good, I, I say reuse it. Um, this brake cable seems just fine, but as is oftentimes the case, the little rubber boots are trash. So luckily we have little replacements. I'm just gonna go ahead and install those real quick before installing this cable. Just get the remnants of that old boot off of there. Okay, I'll just temporarily take the felt off here and slide this boot onto the cable. With the aid of a small screwdriver. Reinstall that felt. I'm just gonna put a little drop of oil on there. I'm just feeding the cable through to, over to the master cylinder and then to the handlebar. So just feed the cable down and find the proper routing so that the cable has a nice straight shot to the master cylinder. And then back over to the brake lever. Put a little bit of grease on the, on the cable end so that the barrel can pivot inside the lever as you uh, or can pivot easily because it's lubricated um, when, you're using the, when you're actuating the brake lever. Now that we have the, the uh, cable successfully installed, just a dab of grease on the ends of this little pin and set that between the lever and the uh, master cylinder piston. And then we gotta put this cable end in here, this barrel. Depress the piston and snap that into place. All right, now, the next thing is to adjust the cable length. And this is the tool that maybe you have, hopefully you do. It's a really cool little tool, no longer available unfortunately from BMW, but it has all the different feeler gauges that you need for setting the points, the valves. And what this thing's for is setting the cable length. And it simply fits right in like that. You can see right now that's loose. So I'm gonna adjust the cable out in this case, the cable adjuster out to pull the cable in a little bit and do that just to the point where this gauge, you feel a slight amount of tension. And it just fits in there perfectly. So that's your cable length. Now you can lock down the little lock nut on there. And that's, that's all good. So if you don't have one of these tools, then I can tell you the thickness of it. Maybe that'll help. It is we're just about it's about 1.2 millimeters thick, and so you could get by with with something that's about 1.2 millimeters thick as just a feeler gauge and kind of hold it in the side to approximate. I think that the adjustment is very important, but it's you know plus minus a little bit. So in case you don't have one of those, that's another thing you can keep in mind. All right, now we're going to put brake fluid in and bleed the brakes. If you have something like this, it's a vacuum brake bleeder. It's really a pretty awesome thing to have. So I'm just going to set that, put this tube on the nipple there, and then we're going to put some brake fluid in using Liquid Molly DOT4 brake fluid. And 
and just carefully pour some into the master cylinder reservoir. Now I'll hook some air pressure up to the bleeder and crack this nipple open. And start to suck brake fluid through. Now you have to be careful that you don't run out. So you have to constantly refill the reservoir when you're doing this so you don't run out and grab and suck in some air. And then also grab the brake lever a few times while you're applying the vacuum to get everything, get all the air out of there. So I've moved quite a bit of brake fluid through there. Get everything good and the brakes are feeling pretty good. I've got good pressure point here. So just as a final thing, it's always good to just, I like to just manually bleed it right at the end. And so just hold a wrench on there, grab the brake and squeeze the brake, crack the nut, let some fluid flow through, close the valve, let go of the lever, pump it a couple times and just run that through a couple, just to make absolutely sure that you don't have any air coming through. Because with the vacuum bleeder, it's all happening so fast, you can't really see. But I, I'm pretty happy I'm seeing a real constant uh, flow of brake, brake fluid coming out of there, so it's pretty good. Plus my lever feels okay. But you can now, if you look carefully here, you can see when I pull the lever, how that caliper is distorting. That's because we haven't adjusted it yet. So we're gonna get to that in just a second here. I'm just gonna pop this off. So as a final little touch here, we've actually got these original ATE um, brake bleeder caps. So I think we should put one of those on too. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and top off the fluid level. Put the cap back on the reservoir. And now adjustment. So you grab the lever, you see some movement of the caliper. That's, so you've got to go in here and find that little, you need kind of a wide bladed screwdriver and find that eccentric. And you can see how that moves the caliper there. And so what you want to do is grab the brake and turn that at the same time and move it back and forth while you're applying the brakes. And you'll find there's a real little, like a little sweet spot in there where it's not moving the caliper anymore or very little. You can totally feel it. So to ex exaggerate that, I could feel I can see the caliper moving and you can sort of turn it until you, as you compress the brake lever, it's kind of a little bit hard to explain, but as you compress the brake lever on the handlebar and turn the screwdriver, you'll find a spot where it's sort of like right in the middle of where resistance would go if you turn either left or right. And so that's how that's adjusted properly. So. And that's that. And then we have the cap that goes in the bottom with the spring. That keeps the, the position intact, so you want to install that. Awesome. I'm stoked that the brake master cylinder rebuild worked out. And we've got our new brake disc, pads, hydraulic line, fresh brake fluid. Our brake system is good, so we'll be able to stop. Now the next thing is let's make this thing go, and that's gonna happen in the upcoming episodes. In the meantime, uh, leave us comments, and we like those. You'll find references to a lot of the parts we used in this video, and the tools and such, in links below. And 
Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you'll be alerted when the next episode comes out. Maybe one, maybe two, we'll have this thing on the road. We'll see how it goes. But until then, keep the shiny side up, the rubber side down.